what we did was on the 17th of March, St Patrick's Day 2007, a team of us left London. We returned in June 2007. What we managed to do was to get 250 people safely to Everest Base Camp. Everest Base Camp is well above the highest point in Europe, so that's quite an achievement in its, in its own right. But also 25 people got to the summit of Mount Everest. And en route, we did a number of scientific experiments. Um, as far as we know, it's the largest human study ever of hyperbaric hypoxia. So studying the effects of low levels of oxygen in a low pressure environment. Now we're, both myself and Mike and most people who went, we're intensive care doctors. So we work uh, most weeks in an environment where the, the sickest people end up needing help from life support machines. This is a picture of somebody on an intensive care unit. They are suffering from a low level of oxygen in their bloodstream and particularly in their cells. So we've connected them up, up to a whole load of machines and drugs, but mainly the principal life support machine is an artificial ventilator. So we've put a tube down into their lungs and we're blowing oxygen into their lungs to try and keep them alive. And often, even if we put it up to 100%, five times that that we normally receive by breathing, we can't keep them alive. Now, broadly speaking, if we take, for example, somebody who gets a pneumonia, uh, a typical way of getting low levels of oxygen, a bad chest infection, there's about 25% of people that if we give them antibiotics and bring them into this environment, we look after them and they shake it off in about a week. And six weeks later, they're better and they're back to work. There's about another 25% that no matter what we do, they're dead within a month. No matter how sophisticated, how clever the doctors are, whatever the drugs are, there's something about them that means we can't get them better. Even though they're the same when you look at them as the 25% that got better straight away. And then there's the 50% in the middle that they make some form of adaptation in the first few days and then they go into a hibernating state and we have to look after them for weeks or months and eventually they wake up and get better and a couple of years later they're completely fixed. What we're trying to understand by looking at adaptation to high altitude is what allows those people to adapt quickly to be well in a week or those who adapt a little bit more slowly but survive to see if we can take the ones who don't survive and give them some treatment to make them all survivors. That's broadly speaking what we're trying to achieve. So to give you an idea of the challenge we, we were up against, in order to do all the scientific experiments and to build the laboratories up the mountain, we took around one million pieces of medical equipment with us about a million pieces. And this is the equipment in barrels, part of the equipment for just one of the laboratories we built on the mountain at Everest Base Camp. We didn't skimp on any of the science, which is why we needed all the equipment. So this is a tent uh, high on the mountain. You notice it's got wiring here because we ran everything off uh, effectively mains electricity using generators that were carried in. This is exactly the same equipment we would use in London. These are exercise bikes which were stripped down and rebuilt all the way up the mountain. These are a brain measurement using near-infrared spectroscopy. There's muscle near-infrared spectroscopy. So we did everything we wanted to do. We got an enormous amount of data. We did over 40 separate experiments. So we have, for example, got 4,000 person di diary days, more than a quarter of a million <coughs> data points, uh, more than 1,800 exercise tests, more than 10,000 blood samples which are being analysed at the moment, and more than 1,000 detailed neuropsychological tests. So. We didn't skimp on anything, and most of that has been completed and is in publication at the moment. I've told you about the critically ill patient, and then I want to introduce you into this equation. This is a, a fetus in utero, and what I want to try and convince you of is you've all been to the summit of Mount Everest, and you all have the ability to go back to the summit of Mount Everest. Because you're alive and because you're sitting here, you've been exposed to those low levels of oxygen and you've survived it. What do I mean by that? Well, when you grow in the uterus, this is the most successful developmental time of your life, you're feeding off the scraps from mum. So the placenta is supplying you with mum's old blood. She's already taken a lot of the good stuff from it, and that's what's keeping you alive. And people have worked out that actually the amount of oxygen that's available is calculated to be the same as the amount of oxygen that's available on the summit of Mount Everest. So we've all been there we've all tolerated it. And there is actually one theory that when we're born, we're thrust into an oxygen-rich environment and it's that that's killing us. So our theory is when you're critically ill, you actually somehow switch those mechanisms on and go back to the womb. And that's what's keeping us alive.